G'day. In a recent video, I shared my personal worries about how factoring is typically presented to students in an algebra class, factoring equations. It's usually about factoring trinomials, these quadratic expressions. And my worries are, th are things like most quadratic expressions don't actually factor, and if they do, they don't typically factor nicely. So it's all about factoring questions that have actually been designed to factor nicely. And then it makes one wonder, why are we doing this? Are we just doing factoring for the sake of factoring? It seems like that to many students. Without a context or purpose in hand, what are we really doing? Well, of course, as a mathematician, I do believe in factoring. And as an educator, I do believe in teaching factoring. But only when it has a purpose and you can see what it does for you. And what factoring typically does for a mathematician, it often reveals insight and structure to a problem at hand. To wit, here is a crazy problem at hand. Let's graph the equation of this polynomial expression. Y equals ugh, that. But here's the thing. Someone was nice to me and gave me my polynomial in factored form. It's x minus 60 to the 30th power, times x minus 2 to the 7th power, times x plus 4 to the 96th power, times x plus 20 to the 15th power. That factored form, I think, is going to help me out. All right, so here's our challenge. Can we actually uh, use our common sense and work our way through this particular challenge and graph that beastly looking thing? All right, okay, I will admit I'm nervous. And in fact, that's it. That's the first step in problem solving. In fact, most people don't recognize that there are two fundamental beginning steps to solving any problem, even in math class. One, be your honest human self and admit your emotional reaction to the problem at hand. I'm human, I'm looking at this, I'm nervous, I'm feeling scared. It's okay to have an emotion, even in math class, because you're human. Be human. Acknowledge your humanness. So I'm acknowledging my humanness, and I'm saying, okay, this makes me nervous. I'm scared. I'm not sure what to do. I feel like I'm just lost. All right. <sighs> okay. Oh, but you, then you just heard me do, my, do the second step to problem solving. Step two, take a deep breath. I did it. And then do something. Do something nonetheless. Do anything, anything to move a little bit forward. All right. Okay. I'm nervous, but I'm just going to do something. I'll do something even related to this problem, because I can see I'm meant to graph something, so in which case, I might as well just do this. Draw some axes, and then, voila, I have done something. Just doing something, no matter how small, can help you move through an emotional impasse. And if we can teach the world the confidence when faced with a scary-looking challenge to do something, anything nonetheless, what a gift to the world. So let's teach that to our students in math class, the confidence to do something nonetheless. All right, okay, so I've done something, great. Can I do a second something? Well, let's, let's see. Okay, let, look at this thing. Um, well, these numbers, 60, 2, 4, and 20, seem special. Um, can I do something with those? All right, let's focus on 60. Um, okay, oh, so I can see right now, let me make x equal to 60, because I can see something magical is going to happen. If x is 60, I get 60 minus 60, I get 0 to the 30th power. That's going to be 0 times some number, times some number, times some number. 0 times some numbers is going to be 0. When x is 60, y is going to be 0, and I've now got a data point. When x is 60, y is going to be 0. Voila. I've now started graphing this thing. I've got a data point, and I graphed it. Whoa. And now I can see x equals 2 is going to do something similar. When x is 2, 0 to the 7th power is going to be 0. I'll get a number times 0 times a number times number. Anything times 0 is 0. When x is 2, y is again 0. I can now see when x is negative 4. Okay, negative 4 is the thing to think through here. Negative 4 uh, to plus 4 is 0. To the 96th power is going to be 0. I'll get something times something times 0 times something. When x is negative 4, y is going to be 0. And when x is negative 20, I'll get 0, zoom, 0 all the way through, negative 20. Bingo! I now have four data points. I've earned some partial credit if this is an exam question. Great, great, great. Now I'm starting to feel good. All right, so what's my natural next question now? So I found four places where the graph crosses the x-axis. Could it ever cross the x-axis again, like at a number between 2 and 60, like at 10? Well, let's think it through. Um, I put in 10, I'll get a non-zero number to the 30th power, so that'd be non-zero, times a non-zero number to the 7th power, that'd be non-zero, uh, uh, a non-zero number to the 96th power, that'd be non-zero. If x is 10, that's non-zero to zero. Okay, I can see. There's no other way I'm going to get 0 coming out of an expression if I don't go with 60 or 2 or negative 4 or 20. Put in any other number, it's definitely going to be not 0. OK, so it's never going to cross the x-axis there. Never going to cross the x-axis in there, or in there, or to way to the left or way to the right. That's the only place it crosses the x-axis. All right, so, OK, so it touches the x-axis here and here, 
and it's never going to cross again. So it's either completely above the graph or completely below the graph between 2 and 60. And I guess in the same place between 2 and negative 4 and the, that area as well. Always above, always below. How can I find out which? Oh, okay, actually, let me go with 10. Let me go with the number 10. Um, if I put x equals 10 to this formula, what do I get? I'd get negative 50, a negative number to the 30th power. Uh, put x equals 10, I'd get a positive number to the 7th power. Put x equals 10, I'd get a positive number to the 96th power. And put x equals 10, I'd get a positive number to the 15th power. Negative number to the 30th power, that's an even exponent, would be positive. So positive times positive times positive times positive. This will be a positive number. When x is 10, I'll get some positive number. It's probably going to be huge and crazy, but it's going to be positive. And if that, I can see, since it has to be positive everywhere here, it's, um, it, it's never going to cross the x-axis again. It has to stay positive everywhere in there. Will not do that, always staying positive. Great. Okay, I feel like I'm getting a sense of the graph now. Maybe I can do the same thing over here and see is it always positive, always negative here. Let's try it out. Let's try, I don't know, I'll be nice to myself. One. If I put x equals one, I'll get a negative number to the 30th power. I get, uh, for x is 1, I get a negative number to the 7th power. Whoops, negative number to the 7th power. When x is 1, uh, I'll get a positive number to the 96th power. And when x is 1, I get a positive number to the 15th power. Uh, that'll be positive times, oh, negative, a negative number to the 7th power will be negative times positive times positive. Positive times negative times positive times positive is negative. It'll be negative between negative 2 and negative 4. Okay, let's do the same thing for this third little splodge this region over here. Let's try like, I know, negative 10. I would have uh, a negative number to the 30th power, positive. Uh, negative 10, a negative number to the 7th power, negative. Uh, negative 10, I'll have a negative number to the 96th power, positive. And uh, that'll be positive to the positive power, positive. Positive times negative times positive times positive is negative. Okay, okay. Um, I guess I also need to do the region to the right of 60. Okay, so let's choose a number somewhere, something that's bigger than 60. In fact, let me be, okay, let me be really crazy. Let's choose a number like 10 billion, positive 10 billion, way out here. What's the graph doing when I go way out to that end? Right, 10 billion minus 60 to the 30th power is definitely going to be positive and huge. 10 billion minus 2 to the 7th power is definitely going to be positive and huge. 10 billion plus 4 to the 96th power is going to be positive and huge. 10 billion plus 20 to the 15th power is positive and huge. So it's going to be a huge positive number as I get further and further to the right. Okay, I can see this graph must be becoming huge and positive if I start doing absurd numbers to the right. Which may as well say I should do the other extreme on the left. Let's try negative 10 billion. Negative 10 billion minus 60 to the 30th power, always going to be positive. Negative 10 billion minus 2 will be negative to the 7th power, will be very negative. Um, 10, negative 10 billion to the f plus 4 will be very negative to the 96th power, positive. And negative 10 billion uh, plus 20 will be negative number, huge negative number, to the 15th power is negative. Positive times negative times positive times negative is positive. X is negative 10 billion, it's going to be huge positive numbers going up like that. Okay, okay. I think I've got a sense of the graph now. It's got to touch the x-axis at those four points. It's got to stay positive here, stay negative here, stay negative here, be positive and going up, to getting huge, be positive getting huge. So the graph has to be something like, I'll do it in yellow now. Uh, well, the, all the tools I've got, I don't know what's going on. It's got to be zero. Then it's got to be positive here. So maybe it's got to just be positive. Who knows what it's doing? Positive. Then it's going to be negative here. So maybe it's doing something like this. Do, 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 do. Great. Then it's to be negative here. Do, 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 do. And then it's got to be positive over here, getting, getting huge and positive. Bingo. There is a graph of this factored equation. Whoa. Whoa. Now, you're probably laughing at me doing this because actually I don't know what's going on between 2 and 60. And with all the tools I've got, I don't know what to draw. I bet most teachers, teachers will say, no, 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 you should draw something that's, that's more reasonable because we know from the techniques of calculus, which you don't know yet, that actually this will be a nice smooth curve more like that. But the fact is, if I'm in an algebra class, I don't have no calculus yet. So actually, I don't know what's going on. So actually, anything that you draw that's always positive between 2 and 60 has to be acceptable at this level of work. There it is, the power of common sense to work our th way through something scary and ghastly. And actually, it was the factored form that revealed the structure for us here that made this possible.
Factoring is okay. Factoring is good. Factoring is helpful. So let's teach it with context and purpose and understanding of why it's helpful.